why are there so many different sects of Judaism? There's Satmar, Chabad, Sephardic, Ashkenaz, Litvish, Bells, Breslev, etc. Why are there so many different sects? We all receive the Torah at Mount Sinai. We have the laws. Why are there so many different sects of Judaism? Now, the first thing you have to understand is that the core basics, the Torah, the oral Torah, the halachot, are very, very, very similar among all Hasidim, Litvish, Sephardic. 99.9% of the Torah is the same. You go, the prayers are very similar. The, you know, there's everyone does Shachrit, of course, Mincha Avit, similar manners. So, the core is the same. But there are little details that are different. There are different focuses amongst the different groups. How I like to see it is that when you go to the ice cream store, there's different flavors of ice cream. If they were all just the same flavors, uh, it would be a little bit bland and wouldn't be good for business. <laughs> um, so the same thing with Judaism. We have different flavors. And not only that, to an even greater degree, all of us are part of one soul. All of our souls are part of one major soul, one massive soul the soul of Israel and we are all different parts of that soul so so we all have different missions some Jews it's their mission to learn halakha and become post-sex others it's their mission to try to do kiruv others it's their mission to learn chassidut the inner dimensions and the zohar Others, it's their mission to learn a lot about Chumash. Some, it's to do acts of kindness, help the poor. Others, it's to go pray for help the soldiers. Some, it's to go help the sick people. Others, they're, it's their job. They're working in business and they, they study at nighttime and they try to do Kiruv and build communities. So just like a body has many different organs that all serve the purpose of keeping that body healthy and alive, so do the different sects of Judaism all serve different purposes, but are all part of that same body. If one organ was to stop working, it would affect the whole entire body. Same concept with the different sects of Judaism. And that is a way so that we won't see each other as different and divided, but rather connected. And each different part, not only does it not divide, but it unites and it allows us to all flourish and keep us all afloat. Because one would never say that the the kidneys are divided from the stomach and the organs. No, they serve different purposes, but all of which directly benefit one another and keep each other moving. So too with the different parts of the Jewish nation. Now, of course, I'm talking strictly of orthodox sects, sects that regard the Torah as divine, not the other, you know, the other sects of Judaism, like Reform and and Reconstructionist, Conservative, the ones that that don't take the Torah literally and pick and choose, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about strictly orthodox, different types of orthodox Jews. And that's, and that's the concept. That is the main idea. And it's a good thing to learn, to, to, to not to be only limited to one different sect. For example... The Tanya, a lot of people like to learn the Tanya. And some people some people say, oh, it's a Chabad book, but it's not. It, it was written by the first Rebbe of Chabad, but it is. Uh, it could be of great benefit to any other Jew, like a Sephardic or Breslev or, or whatnot. And it does. You see the Tanya in many different 
er, uh, many different yeshivas, different types of yeshivas. Same thing with the Rambam, and you see them throughout all these different places. So it's good to have different sects of Judaism because they all serve different purposes, while all of them should be united and all a part of that same picture. So may we see the Mashiach in our days and have our place in the Torah.